as none other than a evil cat Mimi would say, what an epic comeback coming out from YFP here, looking over at mine. I mean, that's my name for sure. <laughs> that do be your name. But looking at this series, I mean, we're in the lower finals. This is best of five. And for Bind, it was a map that kind of looked a little bit scary for YFP and YFP fans out there. And coming right down to the wire, Ender, they're able to start stringing this comeback together and ultimately sending us to a map four. Yeah, it was kind of a crazy string of rounds there where they just kept finding these like crazy situations like somehow corrupt was able to sneak all the way up behind players on b long corrupt definitely having a very strong second half as well but i think the big thing for yfp was just completely shutting down dodo now. yeah i mean dodo first half second half completely different story but this yfp team i think did a really good job finding these opening picks flyquest was going for honestly a, a lot of aggressive looks especially when they were anchoring over towards a kept trying to get that opening fight down short and yfp was starting these rounds off so well and this is so reminiscent of what we've seen time and again this tournament for yfp you think back to the, the game that even got them here they were down big time on haven they rallied seven rounds in a row to stay in the series map three there they stomped to get down to this lower final this is really a position where YFP is comfortable. And I think this now puts Fly in a pretty scary position for the rest of this series. Yeah, I think if we're talking about similarities that we've seen from the teams in the past too, like I think FlyQuest ran into very similar issues on their defense side of bind that they ran into yesterday against Shopify and YFP exploited that. FlyQuest have been in this habit of really overfighting for a short control in my opinion, when I think if they just focused more on playing for more favorable crossfires and showers and playing to the deny the plant instead of fighting so far up their comp would have a lot more going for it um, but i think they just they just get stuck in these gunfights where they don't have all the utility coming in to combo and support with it and yfp have proven they have the talent to to face off against fly head to head yeah when we're talking about the big three i mean yfp they have shown throughout this tournament throughout the main series and this lower bracket run that they can shoot when it's called for it. Even if at the beginning of the series, it didn't necessarily look like they're going to put too much of a fight up. I mean, they slowly started countering Donut. They started popping off Mimi and they'll find themselves going to Abyss. Yeah, and let's be real here. I mean, I think you, a lot of people keep mentioning the big three and including YFP in that. And quite frankly, I didn't believe that there was a big three in Game Changers. Because all year, it has been a big two. It's been FlyQuest, Shopify, no one else has contested them. YFP being a contender is, is something new. This core has really only found their form, found this final form here in GC3, and really started to push these top teams. Getting an upset over Shopify in the qualifiers. Getting an upset over Fly in the qualifiers. And now they finally have a chance to showcase it here on that main stage. This series looked like it was over after the first half of Bind, but that comeback has really opened things back up towards a pretty favorable back half of the map pool and a real chance to come back here and make the finals. When we've talked about Bind in the past as well for YFE, we've talked so much about Marceline, and even just Marceline throughout the series, but... Someone we've always talked about is a Marceline and has been corrupt. And corrupt showed up in this series. And the perfect time as well, being able to directly counter here fly quest and pop off. And when we're looking at the dire time, I mean Mimi, the difference between the first two maps in this series and this one was night and day. Yeah, it's looking like a Wikipedia page list of Chicago mayors with the amount of corruption on, on map three of this one. <laughs> what? They were out of control. <laughs> You're not familiar with Chicago corruption, Christy? Uh, yeah, I love it. Love it. Big fan. They love doing it. But yeah, I mean, corruption was out this world. Looked great on the Euro. When you're talking about, like, Fly taking a lot of those kind of disadvantageous uh, fights down short, I think round after round, it was corruption that was, uh, what am I calling them? Corrupt. Corrupt. <laughs> it was getting those fights. You're obsessed and, with and Chicago, Mimi. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm it's crazy. But honestly, like, 
YFP just needed someone in the server to wake up because it was completely yes. dead for them in the second map. And, and you can see there, Corrupt has two tough maps and it instantly shows up. And this has been sort of the calling card of YFP throughout all the qualifiers throughout the main event is that map to map, you have a different person that is capable of just stepping up and, and carrying the team. This map, it was Corrupt. The next one, it could be a completely different player, but you know YFP have the players to step up when it counts. And frankly, when their backs are against the wall, when, when, you know, they're one or two rounds away from risking losing the entire thing, that is when YFP have looked their best consistently. And even when we're looking at the map ahead, that prospect, that idea gets especially terrifying. Looking at Abyss next up as our map number four. Because for YFP, this is not only their pick, but it was such a close series yesterday up against Refrag until we got to Abyss. And then all of a sudden, Mimi, it was a YFP that was running away with the game. It was so much confidence. And for FlyQuest, we haven't seen them here for a little bit. And in that game against Refrag, it came with the exact same setup. A massive comeback on the map before. There it was Haven against Refrag. Here, it was on Bind against FlyQuest that then push into another map where they went and stopped. And the real question is if that history will repeat itself again for YFP. And I think they're really well postured to do so. They're five and zero on this map right now. And I think play this Harbor composition super well. We didn't see a ton of teams in VCT pick this up, but I thought those that did looked really good on it. On defense especially, those Harbor walls are so oppressive to threaten walk-ups in mid and to set you up for super successful retakes as well. Yeah, whereas FlyQuest, they're rocking double duelists, so no Cypher, no passive info, which is a huge weakness in this comp. Now, they have the ability to go take a lot of fights, to dive with two players into a site, which I think can be really interesting, especially over towards that B side of the map. Uh, but this is a team that has not played a single map of Abyss in Game Changers. They have three games played with this same comp just a month ago, so they're not strangers to it, but they have not tested up against the other competition in this tournament. And proving they can run this map to a high level right before potential best of five tomorrow against Shopify would be huge for them and their chances. This first half is everything for FlyQuest, though. If they're coming out of this half with the worst scoreline, playing no sense on defense against the Harbor Comp, I think spells disaster. YFP have a real chance to fight back into this series. YFP have proven how strong they are on Abyss, but it's an opportunity for FlyQuest to show and prove that they're capable of closing those going to the finals. Matt Forehead, Abyss, and back over now to your casters, Uber and Wyatt for the call. You really couldn't have a better stage set for a comeback, or at least a map five explosive into this series than what we have now. We've just seen a massive comeback from YFP. We're on a map that they're very familiar with, one that hasn't been great, uh, or at least very well demonstrated by FlyQuest Red, and they're playing a no sentinel comp on this map, much like they did on Bind Wired, uh, I guess, I, I, you know, and a factor that kind of hurt them at times on that map, here, I mean, their ability to control mid definitely will be in question. Luckily for them, I think they're starting on attack. They can build some of that momentum. Mimi just said, and I agree, that they need to come out, kind of guns blazing, on this first half, stop the momentum from YFP, get back into this. And if they started on defense, I think it's much like uh, much less likely, excuse me, that that would be possible. This FlyQuest, uh, or rather the YFP team, sorry, with this harbor, their attack side yesterday was incredibly impressive. They completely destroyed Refrag with it. Look what this harbor wall has done. It has definitely kept FlyQuest at bay in mid, but they also have a wall they can throw me with the Viper, which is a rarer addition on this map. That can threaten a walk up. That can give them some semblance of map control. This one way here has to be disrespected now because, well, time is frankly of the essence. Halfway into the round now, and that is a nice little snake bite that's going to force Elaborate back into security. This will allow Fly to have full control of this A site with the exception of the tower, where at least the smoke will keep them back for now. They don't have decent utility to get back in. They're fighting forward, though, or Fly, and they lose the first because of it. They've got a code to get onto the spike and try to defuse. This is going to be run and gun here as much as possible. YFP going to try and come out of security here. Ev has to reload awkward timing, but Melia doesn't connect either. And they're in a 1v2. Harbor wall there for YFP. Got them within striking distance, but look at the blue X's. They never really get to the site for real. That was a good decision from Fly to try and fight that actively, meet them at the chokes. If they played more passive and allowed YFP to get in, 
they knew that they would be doomed due to the harbor utility. When that high tide cycles back up to cut off the choke, spamming down a cove on a pistol round is not a fun <laughs> prospect. There would, have, there would have just been so much good retake utility to deal with, so they nullify it by just playing aggro. Right really good decision. Why? Almost attack side. Not unlike what we saw on Bind. They really want to get a good buffer. And eight rounds wasn't enough on Bind. So what can they get for themselves here? Is that Cove throwing up? Going to slow things down. High Tide also behind YFP. I rather fly quest, but they're still up to pull out of this A side. I do want to note as this half goes on how much YFP will attempt to flank the FlyQuest players because of that lack of Sentinel. We saw them do it a lot on Bind. Those were the rounds that they were winning on defense on Bind, but Bind and Abyss, completely two different beasts. Bind is a tiny map in comparison to this, much easier to flank. Uh, that's for Util is a bit of a problem here for YFP. They are grouped up as three here, though, but this thing is going to go to work. Just elaborate there. Gun kill. And now off the site, it's Corrupt and Scary Shark that need to try and get involved, but FlyQuest have taken so little damage here, and again, that pace, that decisiveness that they've been able to swing over to B. Bounce off that A site and get so deep should pave the way for a pretty comfortable anti-eco. Time to jump off the map. <laughs> there's, no, uh, there's no other option. <laughs> just take a step back. Both I hate to say it. Lose it. <laughs> just, just take a step back, sorry. Let's, let's get on to round three. <laughs> can't believe, can't believe they're letting the round go like this. I, I appreciate that. that. Yep, that one. I'll go with that. Corrupt. Thank you. <laughs> and there it is. Fly crazy. On their first couple of rounds. Now I have fear chance to buy in. And we, we've seen that the Viper Wolf throwing up in Medieval Fly Quest hasn't been really used for a whole lot. They've tested A. Swung back over towards the B side after, you know, exchanging blows a little bit. This Viper Wolf definitely is something that is, is going to have a role in this attack side for Fly Quest, even if it's just conditioning. Yeah, definitely. It just threatens that uh, the attackers could be pushed up towards the box. It makes it easy to break vent doors so the A players feel like they could be getting hit by a, a split to execute at any time. Is high type maybe to deny that sort of vent door break easily? Still, here we go up mid. Fly quest getting in there. There is a cam though about them. One left there earlier by Elaborate. And then I don't see Starbound, but does it? It's CF. Well, they're going to know now, at least. The idea is that this forces Marceline off the line. Eventually, it does. And then she lingered for a time. So they're going to be able to flash themselves in towards tower on the A site. So there has to be an A main hit now for FlyQuest. They've got to commit. So they do, but it's corrupted Marceline. Good. The stars from the previous map for YFP that at least get in their way. At least slowed them down. But that is two Vandals picked up by the attackers now as the post plant begins. Honestly, two for two wasn't bad in that position, given they were surrounded on all sides. Oh, no, no. Okay, we just go for it. Starbound though, as the second wave comes through and finds both of those kills. The one versus one. Elaborate sticking it. How good is that snake bite? Good enough. Elaborate just gets back on the spike and completes the defuse. I do really like how FlyQuest played that round. I mean, we were highlighting the uh, toxic screen from the Viper cutting off mid. They get all of that map control because of it very proactive with that dash and gate crash all the way to top mid if you're looking at it from the attacker side. And then when they realize those YFP players were both in A main, like, wait, we can just split these guys from multiple angles, hit them from vent, hit them from their spawn, hit them from the front. They were all over them, so Stay safe. frankly, YFP going two for two there was about as good as you could ask. Dodo Nuts picked up the operator now on attack, by the way. And is ready to fight towards mid. What are they expecting? Like a here. contact push up from the defenders here in mid? They really are guarding the other side of this Viper wall. It makes perfect sense. Definitely a concern that Fly could flash themselves through. Here. To allow the attackers to take the level of map control they did in the previous round, surely a second time would be lethal. So instead, we're playing at long range here. YFB definitely down for the challenge. And they're just going to leave Dodo Nut towards the mid side with the optional eventually. Drift over towards the B side as well. They want to pivot to B, but they're going to get beat by YFP, and they have to deal with elaborate just rat set up on site. Flash corrupt, backed out of that 
Of course, the Neural Theft here gonna reveal all the FlyQuest pans. And here come YFP, looking to fight on coast now. And yeah, beautifully put together. You gotta love YFP on this map. They've got such a good plan to stop any sort of push up mid. And the rat play for the Cypher from Elaborate was just something else. That is just the distance you have to cover on Abyss coming into play. Just look at the minimap. When you're an attacker down mid, look at how much further you have to run to get up into the B site versus being a defender. They just beat them there with ease. Fly were in no position to try and fight those anchors on the site. They were too entrenched. Okay, another variation of the high tide deck. Towards mid, something the Starman is going to just circumvent. Gonna be a fast hit towards this site now. Dota not flashed on the way in, but still ready to. Oh! oh no! no! We no, hate no. to see those! Oh, the reckoning also deployed, and this is gonna completely ruin the push. Oh, buddy. Dota Knight is just looking on from a distance, hoping that someone shows. I'm sorry, but they're not coming. They're not coming. Oh, what a what a slow crushing descent. With the blade storm, no less. We need slow-mo when you have this. Oh. <laughs> a, a tragic fate. You really do hate to see that. I mean, nothing is going right here for FlyQuest right now. Like, a, a decent start. Win that piece still fair play, but... You get broken back on the anti eco pretty much straight away. And YFP just... Really look very comfortable working this map. Stop. Okay, Starbound in the post plant. Uh, we're online for it. They're going to back off this. They've actually earned a Viper's Pit now as well. If they salvage this round, I, I tell you what, that would be completely unreasonable. <laughs> I know. Uh, sorry. Well, <laughs> we just get those two picks out of nowhere, I suppose. Ready to fight for sorry. more and gets it. <laughs> oh my God. Scoped in. Burst fire. Every bullet connecting. Okay. Faye is weak. They know her position. We are doing it. Three in a round for Starbound. Eventually brought down. Damage already done. No Faye now has to try and clutch this. Has the Astro Util. Full log in hand, but Elaborate is healthy and has a better weapon. Diamonds of the Essence and there isn't enough. Unreal stuff from FlyQuest. Starbound saves the day. After it all comes crumbling down at the start of the round. There's just no way they lose that. They were playing it so safe. Just ready to retake the double spray down. And Melia, a little bit afraid to just go for the full swing, went for the paranoia, but it allowed Starbound to escape with their life. Not feeling confident enough to just go for the trade with immediacy. What a tragedy. YFP's economy could have really gotten out of control there with a round win with the amount of players they had alive, and now they're at risk of it getting cracked. Early Hunter Fury here for Corrupt. It's a sniff of Sonder there. Right here. And FlyQuest right are playing here. pretty far back, at least in terms of the A side of the map. Eventually that high tide is going to come down and giving Fly the option to make their way through mid or at least just bang out that vent door. That's they more of a default Kelowna. setup for them now. They sent the clone up mid past the wall, just fake footsteps, but it does end up getting broken. Regardless though, YFP do have to keep their eyes on that. They don't have a trip for mid, so they need to just hard watch it. With the Vandals Who's out. Next? Okay, Crash goes deep, but here. Oh, and there we go. The oh, Dimensional Drift comes to two, sp uh, two players spotted, actually. Okay, and here. Oh, good okay. TP. Much the same as we saw from Corrupt at the start of the round. Here's Marceline, though. Trying to play from the back of the site. FlyQuest. Getting at least over the top of this back corner of the site. Marceline's able to deal with the, the spike carry, though. That is big. Spike down, and now it's just Ev. Ooh, do we see another government bailout of the economy oh. here? Ev printing money, apparently. And again, it's elaborate who goes to go for one for one, but there's no plant just yet. FlyQuest don't manage to do it two rounds in a row. YFP, a sigh of relief, oh breathe. Uh, I'm taking a sigh of relief. I was sweating bullets there for a second. Two rounds in a row. Specifically, it's just the snap onto the player on, right there onto Corrupt. And that position is just mental. Regardless of all that, though, regardless of sickening clutch attempts, I mean, what really ends up mattering the most is that 
YFP have just been fantastic at anchoring the B site. There's players that are playing around the back, just biding their time, staying alive, have been doing a great job. We've got to be clear here, this double duelist setup from FlyQuest, they're really hoping to build some momentum on this attack side of the map. They really need to create a little bit of a buffer. Because what we saw on defense from Bayer was far from convincing. Yeah. Really weren't able to make it work. Whereas YFP had decent pops here and there. On bind. See that harbor. Mid control. Right now is where most of that util is being used. But once we get over the attack side. I think we've seen it on a couple of sites here. Really being able to take that map control. It's going to be quite a nuisance for FlyQuest to do. But they know it too. They really know these next couple of rounds have to be big ones for them. Right yes, now they're planning on something for round 8. As this is just going to be a... Well... He's still by up. The harbor really is so strong in the hands of YFP. I was so impressed by how they were using the early high tides on attack to gain map control, to throw yeah. off the defenders. And that's going to be even more of a concern for Fly on the side swap because they don't have a sentinel to gain passive info. They're going to be worried about every high tide the players could be pushed up behind it. There's no cam to watch over it. There's no trips to, to just give information. It's going to be really tough, which is why I, I do feel that this attack half has to be really strong for them to get over the finish line on this map. They're up here really just very passively. Trying to maintain some level of mid presence. Apply for whatever reason not to pull out of his vents with the exception of Starbound. Really a question of what right they're going to be able to hear from that spot. We're heading now over towards main. They want to just go for this A pop with Starbound making a late play through vent. Cause a distraction, hopefully get a pick. And... Not much familiar to see there. Even though she had the line, Marceline, what has happened there? Okay, can we bounce back from that? Nova Pulse going to come down on top of Corrupt. It's going to stun them briefly. Spike but FlyQuest still need to get that spike. Still need to get through this choke here. And with Corrupt winning that fight in tower, a crucial fight at that. YFP are able to exit the round. <laughs> um, Mostly in tower. I have questions mm -hmm. to need answering. Yeah. <laughs> Such what happened, as, Marceline there. Huh? What happened? <laughs> what exactly occurred? And also, that must have happened right at the beginning of the round because you imagine they oh, were just yeah. slowly drifting He's down the floating. whole time so what did they do I mean, what even i mean we may never know okay. no we simply may never know okay well let's chalk that one up to death. some sort of statistical anomaly why i'd say that but it's already happened to a jet in this game so ahead. maybe the cat stepped on the keyboard mm -hmm. it's always possible you watch it, fight it. Oh, heard that gate crash inside a main. Clancy knows about to get hairy on the side. Look at that. Tower's been cut off, but Marceline beautifully done. What discipline as well to see. The clone go past. And instead go to work on the rest of FlyQuest. Devastating impact from the jet. And I think you've redeemed yourself with an eye by power race. <laughs> yeah, that, that makes up for falling off the map <laughs> of the previous round. Second ace of the VO5, by the way. For Marceline. No one could trade on to her. Dodo Nut struggling after the dash in to find her footing with the spray down. It's transferred on to as well. Oh, buddy, that was electric. Okay. YP now starting to build a buffer of their own. Two rounds to their favor. And these A side hits for FlyQuest, even ones that are backed up with like an Astral Divide. Still haven't been good enough. Getting completely unraveled by an off-angle held by an individual. That's got to get in your head. No doubt about it. Just a full A execute again. This time it's not held as strongly. Marceline backside and it's just the tripwire to allow Labyrinth to get a free one. Passive positions long range with the superior weapons. Making it look all too easy. Starbound revealed by the Neural Theft 2. The attempt to flank deep mid, get into a position for a backstab, totally nullified. Yeah, maybe too aggressive there from Elaborate, and they're lucky. They weren't caught by Fade, which that one way ended up becoming something that benefited FlyQuest in that moment. Hey, sometimes you got to go for the plate. 
YP though, by and large, no real reason to hurry. That neural theft completely forced Fly out of that site because the spray down the tower would have been inevitable. Hot hand from Thea, eventually finishing off the Cypher. And here they come. FlyQuest have to walk up here, but Nelia has that off angle. She's been instrumental, but Starbound might be in a position to get Fly a cheeky one. Still fully healthy. Having to go up against the Vandal of Scary Shark and with very limited information about the surroundings, Starbound is going for the clutch. Starbound really has been low-key, very high impact in this series. Not always topping the board, but the kills that they do find have been instrumental. It's irrelevant, though, in a situation like that. Too many angles to watch. Could be coming from heaven, either spawn side. Valiant effort. But right Scary there. Shark cleans things up. Right there. With that kill in the defuse, gets the Reckoning the activated as well. Right Storm, Reckoning both up here for YFP. Uh. Yeah, but we knew this when we headed over to this map. YFP looked really, really good on it. Moments of individual brilliance here. Again, you are using Sheriff's Bulldogs, whatever you can to try and get yourself around here. The economy of FlyQuest has long since been uh, compromised. There's at least around here that they can buy into, maybe earn themselves. And also like a Hunter's Fury, something that could be a difference maker. Here. It's going to be so dangerous for them, even if they do get the spike down though, could get immediately flooded upon with the Reckoning from Scary Shark, or just a full set piece retake could have them in danger. You know, ideally you would want to get Starbound to plant the spike just to get that Viper's Pit so you have something for the post plant. Now it cuts out the bag. Flight quest known as an operator in mid, but don't do that whole thing. That turns off all the Cypher you till over at A. Why are people hoping to play for retake on A and play off those trips? Now that's not an option. Now it's open for the taking. Ah, look at Scary Shark's positioning right now. <laughs> Way just Selling it. chilling yeah. so far forward. Oh my god, and we're just peeking out of <laughs> out, out the back of the box as well, right as the gate crash went off. Scary Shark, Shark is there. They must be able to see maybe that there's not a full commitment there from FlyQuest that maybe Sondra is trying to sell something. All they can do is hear. They hear a clone. They hear a Yoru. They think, okay, they're probably here. So FlyQuest get that A site for free in the end. Nice fake soul over there and Sondra's waiting for Scary Shark to make their way through vents. What a big round to bring back. Oh my god, that's even my favorite as well. Here we go. It's only going to make use of this ultimate now. FlyQuest really investing deeply in this round. But Marceline's going to round a corner with the Blade Storm. Danger for Starbound. Ev as well. At least able to shut that down. Now it's up to Corrupt. Fighting tooth and nail on the site. Four bullets in the chamber. Forced away by the grab well. Now out of time. And FlyQuest get a hard, hard fought round. That was a very cool post plant setup from FlyQuest. I love that fight that was being taken by Sonder in the vent. Thea allowed Sonder to get that kill. We saw on Thea's point of view. She could have killed Scary Shark five different times in that situation. But let Sonder just watch the angle, get the free kill, teleport away, and then was able to just go for this late flank. It only ended up getting the last player, sure. But I think it would have been the nail in the coffin regardless. That was very cool from FlyQuest. It came at just the right time as well. Really helped stabilize that economy that was fledgling at that point. We really not see FlyQuest outside of the first part of this game. First part of this half. Really look to test the B site. This time, though, they have truly sent Odonat and Sonda both up mid. And with my, with this angle being picked up late by Elaborate, they're going to be overwhelmed with the threat of doing so. Nova Pulse doesn't quite hit the bit Elaborate. Really cleverly just gets off that angle. A little bit afraid of trying to take the fight against two duels and I can't blame them, but they win it out. And they're here, ready to fight on the B side. Day is able to find an entry kill. She makes her way around that cyber cage, but that's three for Elaborate now. And they show no signs of slowing down. Four kills for the Cypher and Starbound in a 1v3. Grim tidings for FlyQuest fans. That is actually a miraculous from Elaborate. They were surrounded on all sides, as is Starbound. Not able to recreate the magic. Here. That was goddamn nuts. Labyrinth's getting double swung, both duelists through the cage. And in the meantime, Melia, who needed to fight forward with the op, keep that presence 
on the B main players, just whiffs, goes no. down. And Elaborate is just able to win out three subsequent duels. And then the fourth. That is outlandish. I, I mean, I remember on the desk, Ender was asking for some of these YFP players to come to life because back on Icebox, they just weren't shooting. And now you have Elaborate and Marcelin on this map, corrupt on the last. Again, this is a team with sick firepower across the board. At any given moment, someone on this team is just going to make a highlight real play like that happen. So far for the first best of five, YFP looking pretty good, especially after a slow start. Reckoning thrown up here, very annoying for the attackers to deal with. Yeah, big investment to take mid control with the high tide as well, forcing everybody back from fly. Okay, well, Hunter's furying this. Interesting. Corrupt. Finds the tag on Ev. Gonna be a counter Hunter Fury coming their way. All right. <laughs> Gonna be Star Bentley dealing with Marceline. She was embedded for someone to play off of. Especially with that one way active. You want to fight it. Flyquest have an advantage now. Astro ult gonna be deployed. That is going to cut off Tower. The Corrupt. Fighting retreat. Is able to deal with Dota not there. What the shot? Oh, Hunter what? Ev going down to that. that is not right. Fly down to three. I mean, can someone explain how that got, how that even got a kill? That looked like the most limp shock our torrents <laughs> made. How does that find someone? They are here, just can't get the better of corrupt there. They are waiting on the line. Now the spike just headed over to B, so we've had a rotation pull here quite effectively by Fly. Double back here though by Elaborate. But they are just a step ahead this game in general. Starbound fires an application for this Viper's Pit. Leverage says, well, I think they have the good weaponry for this, but doesn't find a second shot. Starbound deals with a Cypher, and now remaining. it's only Scary Shark. Sonda able to play from afar. Man, fly. Look at what they have to do to mimic a fraction of YFP's power. Say it ain't so. That's the Viper down. The curtain, the wall, gonna drop. Sonda, are they ready for this? They are. Three for the Yoru and FlyQuest exit that first half with five rounds to their name. Could have been a lot worse based on how some of those rounds were going. Now, if you just look at the scoreboard, not too bad, but I really think they're going to struggle here on defense without the Cypher against this Harbor Cop that is excellent at taking map control, excellent at feigning presence deep in mid, forcing defenders to have to pick those angles up consistently because the high tide is just going to get thrown there early and then cycled elsewhere for the full execute. This is going to be dangerous for Fly. And it's going to require some very cerebral play to try to win this Abyss map, get into the Grand Finals for the third time straight. YFP are in a good position here to get us to map five. And wouldn't that be something? For YFP's first best of five, taking FlyQuest all the way. FlyQuest, obviously, a, with the loss here, they have to hope the Shopify Rebellion deal with YFP. Watching Otherwise, here. they're not going to Berlin. And bear in mind, this wall, you are going to see this consistently throughout the half. And immediately on the pistol, they're taking advantage of it to actually fully push up and go for this crazy mid-to-be hit with four players. Think of the fear that that'll instill later. I mean, Starbound is going to instill some fear and elaborate. That's a crazy opening. Okay, Blackwest now playing for the attacker site. In a post plant, not terrible. I mean, why have the R boxed in by Enlarge and Sonda? Ops for timing there, does get decent amount of damage. YFP give as good as they get though. Starbound gonna be lit in this position. Corrupt may opt to push it, but takes a hit through the corner. Sheriffs are dangerous. Pistol won by Fly. We still have game. That sh initial shot from Starbound onto Elaborate was so high impact. I said it before, but it Starbound, this game is topping the scoreboard. But across the series, it's just a player that finds so many high impact kills. And being able to just uh, uh, nullify the one player that was going to be pressuring from B main, that thorn in the side when the, the brunt of the hit came from mid, so crucial. Right here. Why well, opting for something a little different now? Same wall, of course, thrown up in mid. Gonna see that every round. Yeah. It's time training more towards that A direction. Astro Util here, Marceline lit, caught by it. Yeah. Something that thinks twice about trying to pick that angle. Probably the right decision here. 
Good damage done by Fly. Marceline goes low and Donut has the timing to do a scary shark as they try and amble up mid. Multiple scoped weapons. Super long range map. You can really extract the most value out of them here. They're waiting on this. There is another layer, of course, behind them. Is Faye is going to be there for the trade at worst. Vaseline having a crack at it, but very much alone in that endeavor. Area. <laughs> We're going to see Amelia attempt to cross behind the dark cover. They'll be seen as well. There's a little bit of a gap in that smoke. I'll tell you what, the Outlaw and Marshall combo went to work for FlyQuest there. Uh, that's about as clean as it gets. Carrying over every weapon, pure bonus round. Fly able to fully tie up the game now. At seven apiece. A team that was constructed to be able to beat Shopify, take that number one spot in any game changes. They've come so close. And now it's YFP on their heels, a team that's only been playing together with this roster for a couple months at this point. Just this amalgamation of upcoming talented players from various other rosters that have kind of been around that main event scene, but together as a unit have really reached this new peak. Trying to get a big upset win against one of the best game changer teams Getting just ahead. in the world. There's a gap in that wall. It's not one that FlyQuest can breathe into because it's narrow. Narrow area to fire through. It's more what they can see than what they can shoot. Salvan still has the outlaw in hand, but isn't ready for elaborate. Weapon. Okay, gate crash though. Headed over towards that side of the map, so Sonda can move in to reinforce pretty quickly. But Flyer making this really slow mid-exploration happen while B is just being ransacked. It's going to be so tough for them here with the Stingers. There's just not going to be good angles, not going to be good places to fight from. I mean, the best opportunity might be fighting Melia here. This is how as close range as they might get offered a duel. Ghost, certainly no Vandal. All right, Tyrus gun rounds go. This one has been pretty darn clean for YFP. Essentially neutralizing flight every part of the map. And yeah, that push up mid. FlyQuest red does nothing for them. Scary Sharks ready for it there. They've at least able to get this outlaw ticking over a little bit, but now they'll be let out there in towards heaven. No chance already dropped towards the, the spike. Excuse me to get a defuse. Look how out in the open and expose that position. Will be. So, over. Good start to the half of FlyQuest. And now a reminder that YFP are the team that's at home here on a bit. Yeah, but both teams going flawless for flawless. YFP now, though, they have to be concerned that an operator is going to come into play. They need to be playing around this. It would be foolish if they don't. Fly's economy, obviously, more than good enough to purchase one, given they had that prior flawless round. It looked like it was Dodo Nut picking it up. Expected maybe to see Starbound with the operator holding that line from heaven onto B. They've got to be ready for this off, though. Yeah, I think Fly, you can see how much they prioritize just having no smoke weapon. And here we go. That's messy stuff. Fly was able to get away from it, though. Both sides flash. Marceline really wants to get in here. That's the tail we use now. It's messy. A lot of util over the side. Cove also thrown down. Cascade. They are waiting inside the Cove. Puts them to bed. Now the spikes loose ahead of Melia. And there's every bit of utility in the book here available to slow this omen down. Oh, that flick was otherworldly, but Melia's not able to quite connect and it's up to Elaborate. Who in fairness has been on fire on this map. But a 1v3 with the spike not to hand, bah, that's perhaps a little outlandish. A little bit, not entirely out of the question. Damage would still be va uh, valuable for Elaborate to get. The YFP economy, not too bad, given they also had that flawless. Flies is in a much worse position. Wait. I think Santa heard that, but they are checking the corner. This time now, they're checking their head. 30 seconds left. Your jig is most likely up here for Elaborate. He's doing some extra due diligence towards the end of the round. I'm hoping to hold onto the Vandal going into the next one here. So this map remains really close. FlyQuest have definitely demonstrated why a little bit more comfort on this defense side. 
then you mentioned right like you know yfp definitely have to be aware of the op now they're gonna have to play around it certainly both teams really messed up their early round plans there sonder trying to flash out of the the star self blinds they try to retreat and then because of the self blind and the awkward positioning yfp felt like they needed to capitalize off that but they just weren't ready to actually have a holistic sight hit like a whole hit they just rushed it in awkwardly with marceline in but then no follow-up and then the cove but no one's ready to get in it so thea just beats them to getting inside the cove finds free kills it was very awkward it just it seemed like they knew that there was a timing they could capitalize off of but they just weren't ready to do it as a team and it just ended up becoming a bit of a mess which fly take full advantage of thea took full advantage of really it just comes down to her another one of the players on FlyQuest that just has a knack for finding those moments to get the high impact kills and we definitely like what we saw from YFP on that first half. You'll notice a lot of those defense rounds, they strung together beautifully. And we can see what the purpose of the harbor is here on the attack side as well, to give them a foothold on some of these sites to try and get a plant. But you're right, there's a lot going on. A lot of utility being thrown down. And maybe YFP's protocols start to fray at the edges a little bit once we get into those more frenzied parts of the game. And again, they also have to realize that they're still at risk of losing the series here. They still need to you know, take this map pick and win it. Three players for FlyQuest stacked up towards B. The operator from Dodo trained on that main line. Revealing area. Look at that defensive Viper wall over the B side. It'll be handy in a pinch, handy for a retake if needed. Full default look here for YFP. Can they dig FlyQuest out of these spots? I don't think they're looking to get much info up mid this round. Perhaps a heavy B lean against all be three players. And this line in heaven will certainly be smoked off. Elaborate peaks before it can come I down. That's just a mistake that what? cannot be afforded what? right now. What? Not something down to five through the smoke. I'm not sure how that was seen. A six cents for it, apparently. Okay. I'm right, gonna go down. Scary Shark trying to make this happen. Marceline still wants to be relevant in this round. Even at five HP, Ev is low. Some of that spam that came through the walls is a bit of a problem. Now or even in numbers. Starbanzo is here to really make things tough. Corrupt can't handle two. And Marceline, who tried to pull herself off of the site after taking that leg shot, presumably, is gonna try and get ahead of this. Starbound is going to be lying in wait. Another three kills for Starbound, who's been a shining light for FlyQuest Red on this map, and they get themselves into the lead. All I know is that's going to be one frustrated coach out of the timeout, just swinging over, uh, you know, in nest, right into the op line heaven before there's a smoke down. Oh, that is just... A mistake that frankly shouldn't be happening again. Maybe it's coming down to the nerves at this stage. But everything like that adds up in such a significant way. And then FlyQuest really pounce on the opportunity with that fast retake. Flooding in together. Putting themselves in the lead. Permit me some self-indulgence, but man, this has been a good series. <laughs> this is really, <laughs> really delivered. And now we're headed to this round 18, where both teams have those Hunter's Furies online. But YFP obviously down to... Well, Nico round. Gonna have to work in with the Marshal in some way, shape, or form. They've already pretty early gotten themselves through Venk here, but this surely has to have been made very clear to FlyQuest. It's the standard opening from YFP using that high tide to try to pressure towards the leader. goes down opposite what? side of the map. What is that shot? from Corrupt. Bit of damage on Athea with the shock dart and forces her back right into the waiting arms of the players that took advantage of the early high tide mid by getting into Vent. They've split into the site. Temp here to disrupt the plant. It works. Buys a little bit of time at least for FlyQuest. Oh, scary shark. Not her day apparently. Recon was also to follow this one up. 
Flyquest don't have full control this part of the map here. Starbound would need to play off pings or just commit. Down the rope. The audacity of it. Gets the drop on two Starbound. They have just unraveled this now for YFP. Still a post plant though. But still, defuse required. Melia will spray. That's going to give away their position. How does Starbound navigate this? Got to stick it. There's going to be spam either way. They think they hear footsteps. Maybe you stick this. Might be no choice here for Melia. But to commit, the spray is good. Ooh. I tell you what, it takes some serious self-confidence to, to stay off the site in a situation like that. And a great round to bring back the YFP. They set up for a great A split, but it would not have happened if Corrupt didn't hit that initial share of shot. The reaction time on that, the swing onto Dodo Nut was just insane. Finding that opening and then creating a situation where the other site anchor was doomed via having to look at two different angles, getting swarmed by both, and suddenly flies economy in the bin. It's terrible. Hero rifle for fly quest. Starbound holding it down over at B. They managed to get themselves some light armor. Interesting. This time fly. They want to push up into mid, but corrupt already. Sonder down. Dota not just trying to spam and pray for a trade, but it won't come. That's the risk as well of just walking up mid like that. There's going to be a cascade yeah. that comes through. They've been trying to ego past the wall, which yeah, I'm not mad at. They're trying to make that presence known. They waited out the recon that time as well. They don't want to allow that wall to dictate too much of the game, which does make sense. But still, it's just going to be tough to play against when you don't have a Sentinel, regardless of how you play around it. Dota Knight gets out, but can't the same rip. They have trying to play that corner. Nah, this one will be over in a short moment. Starbound, I think, like 24 frags after 18 rounds. Pretty insane performance from them. I mean, the set on the desk is like any one of these FlyQuest players can turn up and take over the game. We've seen that. Saw it from Dota Nut earlier. Then Starbound. Who else do they have in reserve? I'm not sure if Starbound is going to be enough at this rate. This is going to be a round that puts YFP up by one. Starbound might look to do a little trolling here, though. We take that. One weapon dragged from the cold dead grasp of corrupt. However, five O's on their way. <laughs> I mean, why? YFP can kind of hunt, but not really. Melia has a lot of money, but no one else does. Fly are going to get their buy regardless. Uh, Scary Shark wants to fight though, and it does get traded. Scary Shark wanted to fight though regardless. Everyone else has their ult, and they were trying to get her as close as possible. She found that pick, then they threw her the spike. It's like, all right, I'm down to take the fight. If I win it, I get an orb. If I die, I get an orb. Another one-off reckoning. So it's potential for a five ultimate round to win what is going to be one of the last full buy rounds of the game. Yeah, so we'll see if they try to fight over one of these early orbs. That's a great point. Yeah, Scary Shark with a uh, reckoning here would be incredible for YFP. Again, make no mistake, this round here, round 20, one of the most important, maybe the most important of the map. Black Quest have been able to make it close. But YFP have a chance to really shut that economy down. Operate for Dota or not here. Standard exploration into mid for YFP. No walk ups from the defenders. Interesting, and that's a cascade sent actually into a heaven to make it seem like they could be pressuring towards vent. Meanwhile, yeah, it's been Marcelin containing towards B. Dota not had the op over on that side of the map, but it's rotated off that cascade. Look at how it's dragged the defensive rotates, and now all of a sudden it's just starbound on B. They've been fantastic. They need to at least get one. They're in a wide open position here. Scatter. This could be a problem. Look about breaking the crosshair place, but multiple tools to that effect have now been used by YFP. And Starbound is alone with not really far to go. And that felt like a foregone conclusion. YFP spend big. With only one ultimate now left to make sure they get onto this site. Now we have to talk about the retake. Ev's already been able to find a shock dart kill on Scary Shark and Dota Nut. They want to post up here. Will the timing favor her? 
There should be some controller util as well. Yep, available here for Fire Chris to try and go for the retake. This is a really bad wall for YFP to have to deal with. They've got to find a way to break through. They've got to play close, but Donut's already headed over there. Thunder, flash through the wall, destroys Melia. And around that we thought YFP would carry out over their shoulder. Instead, blows up in their face. But that was just YFP making the crucial error of not keeping track of that Thea ultimate. Far too many players off-site. They needed to be in there playing crossfires together. The numbers were even. They had a man advantage until that shock dart came through to kill Scary Shark, who was intending on planning the spike to get the reckoning available. Still, though, big error from YFP. After FlyQuest over-rotated, they really gave them a chance to win that gun round, propel themselves towards winning the game. That would have been FlyQuest's economy completely destroyed. This map just got a whole lot more interesting. Someone's been out to buy Corrupt the Bulldog at least. And YFP's economy now hangs in the balance. Whereas FlyQuest, not so much. Should still be able to make, make something of this next round if they were to lose this one. Melly is embedded over towards those vents here, but it's going to be a bit of a throwdown now in A-Main. Marceline sees Sonder, but could be a double swing here to try and punish the death position. Okay, Reckoning comes out. Dota Nut falls. Who's going to help Sonder? They have to dimensional drift to get out of this, and now they'll make sure they relay this positioning to the rest of FlyQuest. Sonder's just trying to escape. It doesn't actually have a game crash, though. Just has to go out of the dimensional drift. Melly is over in the vent, so there could be an engagement in mid there. They are playing close in A-Main as well. This Sonner position is a head-scratcher. <laughs> but they did get out of trouble. They might also now find themselves in a position to catch a rotate. So much has to do with this Sonder and elaborate encounter. Okay, play some good, decent for Sonder, but... Well, elaborate had the operator. Now you can bounce back across the map, especially with this information. FlyQuest here, I mean, very unfavored to win the round from here on out. Starbound is... Gonna be had for dinner. Easy one for Melia. And they still commit Quite towards this A site, and fair enough. They win the trades. Yeah, a good trade from Elaborate. Was worried there when Melia was just keen on taking an extra fight that wasn't really necessary. What a shot from Ev. No. You are not doing it. Absolutely not. <laughs> Blood pressure already concerned of mine. <laughs> yeah, right. Listen, I respect the effort. I was sweating bullets there for a moment. Sometimes you gotta believe in map, uh, in a bit of magic. Sometimes you gotta follow your doctor's advice. And yeah, I guess that Sondra elaborate moment there. You know, the fact that the Cypher ended up with the Operator. Not the first time I saw that. I think uh, elaborate with the Operator yesterday was a pretty big component of what gets YFP into this game in the first place. And you definitely call a timeout here. You can half buy. I guess you've been pretty careful about this. We'll see what the weaponry ends up actually being, but you know the attackers have an op to play with. You know they've burned through most of their big ultimates. They came sort of a couple rounds ago, that round that FlyQuest were actually able to win, which that's a result that can have implications over the rest of regulation. And this is Joby calling the timeout, thinking of something to do on this bonus round here, unless they opt for the crazy force, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. Just have some kind of cheeky strat to try to win this bonus round. But the intention is clearly to play for overtime. Really impressed by elaborate cypher play on this map. Specifically on attack. We saw it yesterday against Refrag. Was just decimating on the flanks. Picking off rotating players. That kill onto Sonder. That engagement was the round deciding engagement. And it was the very first one. FlyQuest here still, like much of this map, have to feel like they're playing from behind. A couple of Bulldogs and a Stinger. And maybe Hunter's Fury. There's that mid-presence from Marceline. Just asserting herself. None of that Harbor Util being used there yet. Yeah, didn't actually use the initial high tide. Sends it out delayed. Ah, but see, Uncommon. They have an op, so... <laughs> this is a wall that says... Oh, no, we, we do want you to pick this. Just from only one angle. Yeah, early into this round, they just 
Took some main yeah, control so Elaborate can just post up, contain with the ops, and press a repush. And work other areas of the map. They've worked mid, they've got corrupt into vents now. They don't know about this stack yet, Wyatt, and they haven't found a lot of information elsewhere. Now, this could be so dangerous. I think ultimately have to walk into this. They're not going to have another recon. Flyquest have left. no reason to really pick out. They're all inside this high tide. Flyquest are entrenched. He's ready to fight Look for at the this. mini map, though. Look at the map. Marcelin has already rotated over to B, where Melia was containing as well. They had a contingency if a stack was there. Time is dwindling, but they are going to get the spike down for free. The rest of the so team has rotated off. Lovely calling from YFP and Elaborate in the position where you'll typically find him playing towards mid with this operator, cutting off the rotates. Okay, a little bit awkward for Elaborate. Not what they were looking for, but that is some killer mid-rounding from YFP. Now with the better weaponry, they're going to sit and hatch an egg on this B site. Note the harvest position. Ready for a push down mid. That is definitely online. It is Marceline for three. What is Thayer supposed to do? She's been gifted an opportunity to, to salvage a weapon here, but Mel, you might have it out of her grasp in no time. That could have gone so horribly wrong for YFP, but they sniff it out and they make the right call with the late B rotate. That was truly a picture perfect round from YFP, containing both sides of the map, working mid, realizing that A was the stacked site. And then even at the end there, Look at that high low to deny players coming back in from the B link. And in the meantime, Melia had the dark cover up in a B tower heaven, just hiding in that. They had everything down pat in that round, perfectly played. And now in position to get us up to map five. Wouldn't have thought this was possible after seeing them get blown out on Icebox, their map pick early in the series. And they might run it all the way back unless Fly can deny them here, try to get the game to overtime. And this might be obvious, but why they've looked at the better team constantly over the last couple of maps. There's been no luck, no good fortune about it. Hey, Ev, what a timing to take in the spray down, down is good for two. Somehow, both of them headshots. Fly quest are not done yet. They're not giving up the ghost here. And Ev is just Stakes their claim to mid. Says, this is my turf. Labra says, I'm a good night. Have a nice day. I'm, uh, I'm going to go over here now. That was a nice adjustment into this round. Playing back mid, but being ready to fight if YFE did actually push up. Hop off the map. And so Bit of an adjustment Elaborate. out of the timer. The amount of times we have seen Jovi call a timeout for FlyQuest and then they win the round after that. I mean, obviously they didn't win the last one, but that was not their full buy. Then they win the full buy out of Jovi's timeout. Much higher success rate than loss rate. I'll tell you that. This had such a massive impact on the team's success this year. I tell you what, just this switch up and attitude from Evan that round is so palpable. On map point, just takes these like aggro fight in mid uh, it's just so hard to anticipate that from a team that you know feels like they probably have, have an advantage and feels like they just need to land the plane to to win the map that kind of that quality in a player you really just can't distill quite a special little turn of play there and ev keeps fly quest in this game now the last timeout for yfp being called ev really has been so consistent for fly there were definitely questions i remember posing them myself early on when we were watching this tournament you know, it was playing well in the in the qualifying process to get to the main event you know first game of the main event was good but it was against the the lower tier competition of the top eight I was wondering how will they fare as the tournament goes on filling the shoes of lace trying to get to their first final in game changers trying to go on a deep run, trying to make it to Berlin. And they have absolutely shown out a really talented player that FlyQuest have added to this roster. All right, round 24. This is for overtime. All respectively for the map. YFP trying to take us into a fifth map decider, which would be Lotus. And FlyQuest still have hopes of ending the series here before it gets too far out of hand. 
very slow early on from YFP. Gaining control of A. Mid, though, they haven't been able to navigate up, so they're currently not threatening an A split. Eb is keeping that monitored, as is Sonder, had sent down the clone, is jiggle peeking as well. The A site is light, though, and if this full exec comes through, Thay is just going to have to play to live, and then Fly will have to set up for a retake with that Hunter's Fury that they've got. That'd be pretty quickly pinging the back of the site here, expecting that there's just not a lot of resistance, and they know it now that no one's trying to challenge him on the cross. Maybe playing for a Hunter's Fury, Ev waits it out, trying to stall as much time as possible. Sonder is entrenched here. He's had a quieter game, but he's in a really important spot. It's pivotal, in fact, to Fly's ability to unravel this on the retake. And that judge might find okay. value. Marceline is pushed all the way up towards security. Oh, that's all cover. <laughs> okay. Turner and Stez has a shorty of her own. There's Corrupt, though, able to trade it out. Starbound showing the barrel of the gun, but Melga has too many angles to cover. Now it's going to be elaborate to try and stay in this to try and win it for YFP. The one versus one. Map 5 on the line. Starbound gives it a tickle. Doesn't commit. And there it is. Elaborate wins it out to take this lower final to a map 5. Uh, that was elaborate, just completely taking over the map. Has consistently displayed such a high level of Cypher play on Abyss. Was crucial in beating Refrag yesterday. The lurk on this map, containing and gaining map control in certain spaces, but then also just cutting off rotates at some of those ideal times as well. Massively important. And somehow we've gone to a map 5. I mean, again, would have never expected this after seeing map 2, Icebox, where YFP were just absolutely crushed. We have made the, we have seen them make huge comebacks on individual maps before. They have never played a BO5 in the history of their team, which is only a couple months, by the way, up against one of the best Game Changers teams in NA that have been constructed to be a Shopify beating team, a team that can compete on the global stage and they might just beat them and make it to their first grand final ever. It is just mental, the situation that we've <laughs> wound up in, Mitch. Yeah, we need to hard reset, I think, after a break. Look back on that Abyss map and, of course, start talking about Lotus, our decider map in this series. Winner goes on to face Shopify Rebellion in the finals of Game Changers Series 3. Stick around because it, frankly, doesn't get any better than this.